first. Let's do a little walk around here. So we went with a three quarter maple plywood structure with quarter inch thick acrylic sheet glass. So you have a perfect visual all the way around. Now, again, I said this is a prototype. Maybe I would do a three quarter MDF. That would absorb a lot more sound and a lot more noise, but it, this still works fine. So I guess I could start where I'm at here. The, the, the concept was to make this mobile, whether I was throwing this into the back of a vehicle and going to a mobile site for training or whatever else, or the fact that I could just simply pick this up, put them on a table or a cart like that, and I can move it from garage to garage wherever I needed. So this work cart, I don't know if you remember my other videos, I made this just for transportation. The work cart splits into two pieces so I could easily fit it through any uh, SUV or truck truck that has a tonneau cover that's kind of the purpose of that um, the box here we're looking at this is the shop vac and this is on a remote as I turn the remote on these fans there's two fans one here and one in the back these fans kick on because in Arizona this gets dangerously hot so one fan pushes air in the other fan extracts the air out pretty simple just a, some cheap uh, bed foam to kind of insulate the sound so there's that deal down here is a little DIY dust separator so like I said before everything I've done is on remote so there's the vacuum pretty quiet you can see the fans are now engaged with this open you could hear the difference if I were to take this fully out it even gets even louder so there's that one and then we'll go through this side before we go on the inside of the box. We'll kind of wrap around. We have here this little shelf, which is fully adjustable, so it'll enclose all the way flat, to, again, for the mobile purposes. But this is just for the laptop. And then we have my spaghetti mess of wires. Um, so the prototype, I just use a basic power strip. The next box I'm building for my next, my new CNC that's coming in, I'm gonna have a power strip that's 24 inches. It's gonna stem across this entire strip and it's gonna have pre-built USBs in it. So this will look very clean. But again, I have this on a remote. And my background is running CNC machines. So I know the importance of a quick e-stop. And the way the programming is set up on here, you have to use your mouse and you can hit a pause button to stop this. And that just annoyed me. So what I've done is by wiring this through a remote, my router and the CNC computer itself, I have full capability and full control. Now there's two awesome things with this. When I'm testing a program, I'm really quick to turn on or turn off. The next phase is the whole point of me getting this machine is I could do more work inside the house without actually physically doing work. So this machine is doing the job for me. So I have here retrofitted a baby camera and it's on a piece of wood with a magnet uh, attached to the piece of wood. So that magnet can hit any of these metal rails and I can put external metal brackets on the, in the cabinet for a good view. But the, the camera, let me bust this out, it's fully panned. So I could pan and zoom and tilt all within this control. And this is kind of how I set it up in my house. I have this, I have this little dead switch hooked around the antenna, it's always with me. And then inside the jobs, I could track my positioning at all times and it obviously has the uh, microphone so I could hear exactly and if there's nothing I like I could just hit off and then I'm, I'm safe and sound. Um, next phase to me making this remote, there's two programs I use and I'm actually learning Fusion 360 now but right now I'm doing the Inventables Easel and it's a very very simple easy to manage program. So I'll make my coding in that, and then I send my coding to the Universal G-Code sender. So this is where I home the machine, control my access, um, and then do basically anything else. I could follow the G-Code. I can see where I'm actually at inside the program. So the next phase, next phase would be I have the camera with me, and on my tablet I have a synced up TeamViewer. But also not just TeamViewer, I could literally touch the screen and remotely activate my laptop all through here so I can load new programs. I could basically run this machine without having to be by the machine. So 
I have this on my tablet and my phone for convenience. And then same thing with my programming. It's all based on Google Drive. So I could essentially make a program anywhere as long as I have internet connection. So now let's get into the box. We have nice weather strip all around to keep the dust inside. Also for noise, make a really nice tight seal. I have integrated flat magnets that suck the door nice and tight. Another little weather strip in the middle. And there's my nice thick acrylic. So inside here, I have everything kind of tied together so that there's no chance of the cords wrapping around each other. I have all the wiring integrated and then uh, wrapped nicely through the back track and the side track. And we have two big five inch fans. So those fans are blowing constantly on the PC on the back. And then in here we have the shop vac, which is braced from the ceiling. So that way anywhere in the cabinet, I'm not stressing on my motor. Now this is again, this is the prototype. There's a better version I wanna make because right now I'm limited on clearance. So I could only use, instead of having 15 inches of workspace, I probably killed at least five inches just by having this. So I'll have to readjust it before the work I've done, I've been able to stay in this side of the, of the board. So talking about this little guy, there's another video I'm gonna link to kind of shout out for where I got the idea. Just kind of modified it, made it my own little version. But this router, there's your intake and you have an exhaust. I'm capturing a lot of the exhaust and I put interior channels and these channels go through these lock lines and these lock lines blow air just on the bit. And what that does is as you're doing your deep passes and holes, you're extracting the, the dust up out of the, the cutting area and then my shop axe these little big long nozzles, they uh, basically suck all that dust up. So I'm blowing this way and I'm sucking. So keep the cabinet nice and clean. Then I have this little third nozzle on the back and that's just due to my setup. I had to use a Y fitting. And um, this is a little extra one. So as I'm, I always start from the back and then cut this way. So this guy just hits any residual stuff that was able to get blown past. So it's worked out pretty cool. Um, the lock line stuff, I use at work on our CNC, so that's where I got the idea from. I'll link in the description of like how I built this, of all the stuff that I bought on Amazon. Um, everything's readily available, even at Lowe's, and then again, like Amazon or eBay. But we'll kinda keep, keep walking around here. So at the very back of the machine, see this weird little box. So anytime you're opening a hole, you're allowing all that sound noise to come out. So Putting those big fans, I have a lot of sound escape. So what I've just decided to do is put that same foam to sound deaden that area and a little Velcro tab. So this kind of acts like a pre-filter. So I'm breathing in clean air into the machine. And this is just little ports. So there's the back, a little back of the box, the exhaust for the shop back. So that's the really quick kind of rundown of my cart. Um, I'll go ahead and turn it on so you can just see how much of the box restricts some of the noise. So actually, we'll do we'll do a good one. We'll do it with it, with it open. So we'll turn her on. So it's much better. I'm gonna do a different series breaking down how I made this, um, how I set this up, how I'm running my programs, how I'm designing my cutting tools I'm using. And then I'm gonna go through the whole nine yards. So you guys, please follow that if you're interested in anything I've shown you. Um, from here though, try to make this video as short as possible. I'm dying in my garage. It's kind of another reason why I can hide in the AC and design all this stuff and not have to be out here miserable. So, hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna get into this. You will not find any more of these videos on this channel. You will need to go to Built Anomaly. I'll link this video there as well. But I'm gonna do all the update stuff there. So if you have any questions, um, hit it down in this comment. But then we'll, we'll check out the other channel. This is gonna be... Uh, 
a multiple series will break down all the elements and then I, again I bought another CNC so that will come in so I might do a walkthrough of how you build it because these CNC's come in a whole bunch of small pieces so you have to assemble it and build it yourself. So I'll go ahead and go through all that. Anyways, thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I'm going to get back to making some money on this thing. Peace out.